Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you live from beautiful Victoria here on the west coast of Canada. I hope everybody has had a fantastic week so far. I hope you're all staying healthy, you're staying strong, you're being productive, happy, optimistic. Welcome to this IELTS class. Today we are looking at a task to writing question and we are aiming for that band nine authorship. Welcome Erdem, Ikromboy, MD Shahid, Nisa, Kyber. Good to see you in the class. Welcome Amu and other members. Nice to see many uh, students here ready to learn. While we wait for some more of your classmates, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com. That's academicenglishhelp.com for lots of help with your IELTS writing, uh, including help with the listening, reading, and speaking sections. Check us out there for the general IELTS. Visit us at g-i-e-l-t-s-help.com. That's generalieltshelp.com on both of those channels. We have, or both of those websites, I should say, we have lots and lots of help uh, for you. I'll quickly show you these while we wait for your peers. Uh, this is our academic IELTS website here with the blue background. You can click this big red button to join the premium package. It is a one-time payment for lifetime access doesn't cost very much, so it's absolutely worth your investment. We help thousands of students every week. We are an official British Council Test Registration Center and certified agents. Hi, Nurse Sujaya. Good to see you in the class. Uh, this is our general IELTS website here with the green background. You can click that big red button to join us there again once you have access to all of our materials, practice exams, over 100 HD videos. Uh, you will improve your marks. So um, the writing um, task two lesson is just about to begin. Uh, this Sunday, uh, we will have the IELTS Band 9 Journey Episode 5 EOR. I took the official IELTS exam back in February, and I'm sharing my experience with you. So if you want to see that, join me on Sunday for the premiere of that HD video um, where I check to see if I can get some better marks. If you have questions, send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com. All right. Uh, Vasily says, hi, sir. I just passed my IELTS exams. Vasily, uh, good job. Keep that up. Mittal, I will certainly help you. We are looking at task two writing uh, right now coming up. Okay. So again, if somebody has questions and you don't get answers in the class, just send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com. Uh, we've got lots of live IELTS classes. We've got more classes tomorrow, more writing tomorrow, and then we have speaking classes on Saturday. These are free uh, for you to learn, so make sure to join them. And here is our IELTS task two question for today, okay? When you get to the writing section, the writing section is after the reading section. And when you're reading, in the reading section, especially near the end, in the last 10, 15 minutes, you're probably reading very, very quickly uh, to get all of the answers, to check all of the answers. But when you get to the writing section, make sure to slow down and read the question carefully. Okay, this is not a reading passage. You don't need to read quickly. There's not a lot of information here. Just read it carefully because you have to understand it 110%. Okay, you have to have a good answer for this, okay? Naya, uh, task two writing is basically the same for the academic or the general. Na Naya is asking, is this academic or is it general? Um, Naya, for the writing task two, it's basically the same. You could easily see this question on the academic test or you could see it on the general test. 
task two for both the academic and the general, they're persuasive essays where you have to convince your reader of an argument. Okay. All right. Um, so here, let's read this carefully. IELTS task two writing. You should spend about 40 minutes on this task. Definitely spend 40 minutes. It's worth two thirds of your writing mark. Some people feel that the design of newly constructed buildings in big cities should be controlled by governments. Others believe those who finance the construction of a building should be free to design it as they see fit. Discuss both these views and give your opinion. Give reasons for your answers and include any relevant examples from your own knowledge or experience. You should write at least 250 words. Now, this was a question, a task two question from a past IELTS exam, so it's a good one. All right, um, what is the first step when you read the question? So you've read the question, you are thinking about it. What should you do um, as a first step? So step one, read the question. <laughs> and then do what? Hi, Eugene, welcome to the class. Sunglasses and panda indeed. Uh, Thang Ha says, paraphrase the question. Jainil says, paraphrase the question. Uh, VG Pusala says, read the question twice. Yeah, I agree, VG. Read it twice to just be really sure that you understand it. So, and then paraphrase it. To really make sure that you understand it. And to get important vocabulary and to think deeply about the ideas. This is not your introduction. But it will be useful for your essay. Okay, and in the computer-based exam, it's really easy because you might even be able to uh, cut and paste you're paraphrasing in some part of the essay where it's useful. Okay, uh, so let's do this, everyone. Let's uh, paraphrase this question. So some people feel that the design of newly constructed buildings in big cities should be controlled by governments. Others believe those who finance the construction of a building should be free to design it as they see fit. <clears throat> Discuss both these views and give your opinion. Okay, I'm going to paraphrase this. There's lots of ways to do it. Let's gather some vocabulary and then we'll compare, okay? So,
All right. So here is my paraphrase. Um, certain individuals Let me just get this a bit bigger for you. There we go. So certain individuals ascertain that the architecture of newly built structures in metropolitan areas ought to be regulated by authorities. Opponents to this idea feel that the investors should have control over the look of these buildings according to their preferences. Explain both these perspectives and give your own. All right, now when you're practicing this at home, read the original again and make sure that it makes sense. Um, we've got some paraphrasing by various people in the chat. So let's uh, take a look at that. Uh, Kyber writes, uh, certain individuals ascertain that producing drawings to show the look and function of a recently developed building should be managed by a person who provides money to construct it, while others argue that this should be supervised by the government. Very nice, Kyber. Um, it's not the drawings, but the actual buildings themselves. So that part I would do a little bit differently, but I really like your paraphrasing, Kyber, and you even inverted um, the uh, investors and governments. So that's very, very good. LePay Yan says certain individuals assume that the look of urban blocks ought to be managed by national authorities. The opposite view ascertain that the external of such buildings should be decided by the sponsors. LePay, that's very good too. Also, pay attention to the accuracy. So, um, like with Kyber, it's not the drawings, and LePay, it's not the block that will be a part of it. So, it's good that you're thinking about that but we're talking about the individual structure here. So they're talking about the building itself rather than the block. I think that will become important in the argument, but it's not a part of the question yet. So careful, LePay, okay? And LePay, good job on completing the question. So LePay completes the question by writing analyses, an, uh, analyze, okay? Different spelling, analyze both opinions uh, and provide your thoughts list supporting evidence and cases based on your awareness of past experiences very nice Nagay on says certain individuals think that authorities should have complete control over the design of newly erected buildings others believe that the investors should make these decisions explain both sides very nice Nagay on okay good all right, now um, we're going to identify the topic and then the controlling ideas. So the topic is what we are talking about. So what are we writing about? That's what you have to think about here. And then you have to be accurate and concise. Okay, so it has to have the full idea and you want to say it in the shortest way as possible. So what are we writing about here, students? Uh, Amu Jainil, nice paraphrasing as well. I just took a quick read of those. Um, so what are we discussing? Good vibes. We're not at the thesis yet. Before we can come up with a thesis, we need to think. Okay, always spend a couple minutes thinking before you come up with a thesis. A quick thesis will often get you into trouble because band seven, band eight, band nine, even a band six, five these days requires a good thesis, a good argument. Uh, Pachu says we're talking about the construction of buildings. I don't think so, Pachu, not exactly. So take a look at the original question again. There, it's actually in here, okay? What are we talking about? Just so we're not talking, that's the controlling idea, okay? What is the actual topic, okay? 
Aryan, uh, Jane says architecture. Yeah, and Nick Hill says it's the design of newly constructed buildings. Yeah, it's right here. So we're talking about the design of newly constructed buildings. So architecture is good as well. Aryan, I would say new architecture, right? So uh, the most concise way to say it is new architecture, but if that's not coming to mind, then you can say design of... Newly constructed buildings in cities. Okay, exclamation mark is just for emphasis there. So notice that's an interesting part of the topic here too. We're not talking about buildings in towns or out in the countryside or in the suburbs, but we're specifically talking about in cities. In fact... The question goes one step further and says, in big cities. That becomes an important part of this essay, okay? Does everybody see that? So to get a band eight or a band nine, you have to have a very clear understanding, a very clear picture of the topic, all right? Kyber says, yes, I see it now. Okay, so in metropolitan areas. Um, the most concise way to say this, if you're using very high-level English, is is that, okay? If you want to go for that band nine expert level of English, that's your answer to what is the topic. New architecture in metropolitan areas. Boom, that's it right there. One, two, three, four, five words in this case. All right, so that's your expert level of English. All right, and the controlling idea. And I think some of you said this for the topic. Okay, so the controlling idea. Ajinka, Mittal, if you have an idea, Nursu, let me know. Yeah, Amu, exactly. A metropolitan, thank you for helping with that. A metropolitan area is a highly populated urban area like downtown New York or Tokyo or uh, Jeddah or New Delhi. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, Tharusha, don't spend 10 minutes on your notes or what you're going to write in the essay, but definitely spend three to five. Yeah, so having a good... Um, essay having good content and quality is much more important than having 700 words, okay? I think that's one of the mistakes I made on my IELTS exam when I did it in February in the writing section is I wrote a bit too much and maybe my quality could have been a bit better, okay? Um, Kyber says, uh, controlling ideas, who should take responsibility for the design? Yeah, okay. So is it the responsibility of uh, government or investors to design buildings any way uh, preferred. Okay, so that's the controlling idea. Now, um, before you start writing, okay, so we want to do some critical thinking, like what, why, and how, like what is this, why are we discussing it, how are we discussing it. Last week or the week before, we covered an IELTS task two question that was similar where the question was uh, discuss both sides and give your own opinion. Okay, so this was a question or a similar question that we looked at last week. And I gave you a really important tip um, that time uh, on how you can make this a bit easier, the decision, okay? So in order to decide the best and easiest uh, response, you should think about what? 
Okay, so uh, you should think about what, why, how, and you should do some uh, critical thinking aside from that. So besides that, what should you consider? Okay, so what do you need to consider? And there's, this is a perfect question example for this. Yeah, very good, Natalie. I love it. So very good. Natalie, you're really picking up what I'm putting down in the classes and that's going to really help you when you're producing information. Absolutely. So you should think about how is it in real life? So you should think about the way it works in the real world. Okay. Um, so said another way is don't reinvent the world, there are thousands of professionals, of highly educated people that are working on solutions, okay? So everybody thinks they have the best idea, but there are people who go to school, to very good schools, learn from very good teachers, and invest all their time and energy into these kinds of questions and situations, and they try to come up with the best solution. So we don't need to reinvent the wheel as the idiom goes okay so do not reinvent the wheel all right so i'm showing you a little bit of a different response here okay or a different strategy here okay and this is an important strategy so how does this work in the real world so how does um, the control of the design of buildings in metropolitan areas work in the real world? Okay. So let me know that. What, what happens in reality when somebody wants to create a new building, a new skyscraper in um, downtown Dubai, um, then uh, how does that usually work? Okay. Okay. Um, Paulo, I think you're more looking at the controlling idea there. Okay. So is it, so when I design a building, if I want to create a new building in some city, is it purely my choice of what that building looks like and what I can do with that building? Or does the government also influence uh, my uh, building? Or is it just the government? Is it like, okay, the government says that's your building. That's how you build it. <laughs> give us, give, use the money and you can do whatever you want with it after. Okay. All right. Um, Kyber says the laws which have been imposed by municipalities give instructions to investors about the design of the building. Okay. Kutik, you will crack this. Um, yeah, so Bhavya says, in the real world, investors get uh, to work on the infrastructure, but only according to the regulations set by the government. And Jasur gives a much simpler answer, says both. Abdi Rahman, you don't need to be a member to chat uh, here. I can see what you're chatting, okay? All right. Mittal, I live in British Columbia, not Alberta. I live in the capital of British Columbia. <laughs> Just a little side question there. Okay, so um, how are building designs regulated? in big cities today, um, they are controlled by both the government and the investor, okay? So now let's ask how. So this is a little bit of a different approach than what you're used to from before. So um, what kind of regulations does the government set? What are some of the typical uh, regulations? Okay. Yeah, BCIT, Bavia, is just over in Vancouver, not too far from me. Yeah, okay. 
Um, all right. So how does the government, so let's focus on this question, everybody stay focused. I know you have a lot of questions and if it's different from what we're doing, you can always send me an email, but let's stay focused here. Uh, Vigi Pulsa says the height. Very good. Absolutely. That's very common around the world that the height of the buildings are controlled by the government. You can't just pop up a 200 story building anywhere in this city because you think that's a great idea and you're going to make lots of money selling many, many condos. Okay, so uh, how governments often regulate the height of the building. Okay, what else? So height, um, Tharusha says the distance from the road. Um, yeah. Uh, Yash says the materials, uh, Amu says the fire exit, proper quality of materials. Okay. If we want to say a little bit easier then we can say the safety. So for example, in Vancouver, buildings must be earthquake proof. Okay. We live in an earthquake uh, risk area, same as kind of Tokyo. So um, you have to use materials and you have to have uh, a structure that is safe in case of an earthquake, okay? Because we live in an earthquake zone. And um, the height of the building is also controlled. Um, when you have the height of buildings in a metropolitan area, what is that called, okay? What do you call that, um, the scenery of the height of buildings uh, for big cities. Um, there's a special word for that in English, and you might have heard it. Uh, it's quite a common word in, in today's societies. Um, there's skyscrapers, but when you're looking at all of the skyscrapers together, you're looking at the city's what? A32 and or Jack William. That's right, Jai Neal. Very good. You're looking at the skyline, okay? All right, it's called the skyline of the city. So when you look at a nice city from a high view and you're looking at all of the buildings, you're looking at the skyline, okay? It's called the skyline. Okay, um, so then how do the investors actually regulate the look of that building? Okay, so we're still on the how. Investors um, control the design of the building by what? So... I'm sure that the investors, the people, the contractors, the developer, the developers, they also have a say in what the building will look like. So how do they control it? Okay. Amir, the airplanes usually fly over the cities, um, not through the cities. Okay. So what, what are the constraints of the investor? Okay, so Pachu says the design or the model, so the unique look, right? Sure. Um, the quality, yeah. Within those guidelines, okay. They're the ones who hire the architect, right? Um, the color, although the color might be government regulation. Yeah, Natalie, very good. The cost and profit. Okay, June, very good. June just hopped into the lesson as well. Yeah, it's the cost and profit. So especially the cost and profit, right? So yeah, of course, um, they're going to be, uh, they want to have a nice building that they can be proud of. Okay, so uh, think of uh, Donald Trump, Trump Towers, right? Uh, they want to be proud of uh, the building that they build, um, but at the same time, there are, there are also cost benefits. So nobody likes to lose money, especially very, very wealthy investors who are building these millions and millions and millions of dollars uh, worth of skyscrapers. 
they don't want to lose money. So that also is going to influence the design of the building, right? So cost, profit, and pride. The example here would be like uh, Trump uh, Towers. Uh, we have them in Vancouver as well. Okay, so if you come to North America, that's kind of where Donald Trump, the former president or ex-president of the United States, that's where he made a lot of money is building these giant skyscrapers in many cities across the U.S. and even Canada. Not long ago, they finished building the Trump Tower in uh, Vancouver. Okay. So, and of course, they want it to be bigger than the other guys and look better and shinier. But at the same time, it has to conform to the cityscape, the city's landscape, okay? All right. Uh, Aditya is asking, what if a topic comes about which we have no idea? Aditya, you have to use critical thinking. It's very unlikely that you have no idea. You should have an idea. IELTS usually asks questions that everybody has some idea of, okay? Uh, Muhammad Javed, very nice answer, by the way, with the skyline and the interior design, okay, uh, as well, all right? So we'll add that as well. So they have maybe more control of the interior design as well. Yeah, that's a great idea. Okay, very nice, Muhammad. All right, um, so great Okay, so now that we have this, so we took a little bit of a different approach, we can now create our thesis statement, okay? And this will also help formulate your own opinion, okay? For those of you who don't know, the thesis statement is the last sentence of the introduction that clearly shows the reader your points for argument, your voice of the essay, okay, and the structure. So that's what your thesis statement is. So if I think about it, and I think about the topic and what I just wrote here. So how does it work in the real world? Well, in the real world, both the government and the investor have an influence on the design of the building. Why? Because the governments are responsible for the overall look of the city, the skyline. The investors are uh, controlled or confined uh, or guided by the cost and the profit and the pride of the building. Um, then I can now create a very good uh, thesis statement and I can include my own opinion here, okay? So give me a nice thesis statement that shows me, the reader, the examiner in the IELTS, the structure, the voice, and the content, okay? I'm going to do that. I'm going to write my thesis. You write yours and then we're going to compare, all right, okay, so Okay, there is my thesis statement. I can rethink it, rework it, reread it. Good thesis statements make good essays. Bad thesis statements make bad essays. It's that simple, all right? 
Okay, um, Georgian says, while the government fights to maintain the law uh, when it comes to planning construction, uh, developers are pushing back by taking advantage of any flaws in government laws. Uh, Georgian, I'm not sure if that answers the question. That's a bit awkward. It's a bit off topic. Okay. Nakuman sits says before arriving to my decision both views should be discussed further. Nakum, with that thesis I have no idea um, what you're going to write. Sarah Kasem, um, you can prepare for the IELTS test by following these live lessons and by checking us out at gltshelp.com and aehelp.com. Okay. Uh, Naya says, since both the government and investors are considered uh, contributors to the creation of uh, new buildings, I think that half and half contribution is ideal. Okay, Naya, that's not a bad idea, but I think you can be more specific. Okay. Rashika says, I believe that both government and investors have a mutual responsibility, such as the overall plan and cost and pride when constructing buildings in metropolitan metropolitan areas. Um, Rashika, I think that's good. Absolutely. And I can see where you're going with that. Definitely. So Rashika, that works. You did not separate the plan um, and the cost and the pride to government or investor, but you can do that later in the body paragraph. So I think that works just fine, Rashika. Okay. I think that could be a band nine essay. Amu says, I believe that both governments and architects are equally responsible for constructing a new building. Even though the design is made by an architect, it's the government, uh, it's the, it is. So Amu, don't use contractions. Don't say it's, it is the government's, uh, responsibility to approve the design. Okay. Amu, just the end. There's a bit awkward. It is the government's responsibility to approve the design. Okay. Just says, in my opinion, both uh, governments and individuals have their own impact on the building design. Governments can make regulations for the building. However, investors need to hire architects for the finished look. Yash, I made some corrections. Um, Yash, don't say or don't write, in my opinion, I think that, okay? Don't do that, students. Uh, this is just a tip. I see this a lot, and it's bad writing because it's repetitive, okay? So avoid redundancy in writing, as this will drop your IELTS score, okay? A good example is, I, in my opinion, I think that. Okay, uh, this is, I see it all the time, um, uh, Yash, so that's why I'm taking a minute to emphasize this. Uh, don't do that in writing, that's considered bad writing. In my opinion, I think that it's the same. So your opinion and what you think are the same ideas, okay? Don't, don't repeat yourself, right? All right, um, so here is my thesis statement. Uh, in my opinion, both the government and the investor should impact the design of new structures in metropolitan areas as the former, the government, is responsible for safety and cityscape. Cityscape means the look of the city, okay? And the latter is guided, the latter is the investor, guided by cost, profit, and pride, okay? So... If I'm investing, I have a certain amount of money, the building will be constrained or the look of the building by how much money I have, okay? I can't make the building out of diamonds if I don't have trillions of dollars, all right? No matter how much I want that building to look like it's made of diamonds. All right, um, so, uh, Jainil, I'll take a look at yours. Uh, Jainil writes, in my opinion, it is both governments and investors. Uh, you need uh, an apostrophe after governments as well if you're showing belonging. Uh, responsibility uh, to structure uh, newly constructed buildings in cosmopolitan areas whereby the former um, maintains safety and rules and the latter 
sustainability and finance. So Janila, just a couple of small grammatical corrections and you don't need to repeat the word maintain because that can modify both of your nouns, okay? Or all of your nouns, all right? So uh, let's keep going. All right, so now we can begin our introductory paragraph. Okay, introductory paragraph has three parts. It has a hook, it has a background, and it has a thesis. Okay, and this is not me making this up. This is not Adrian's lesson. This is standard essay writing structure. That's what you need to do. Okay, if you go to high school in Canada, they will teach you exactly this, and every textbook will say the introduction and in a persuasive essay has a hook, a background, a thesis. It catches the attention of your reader. It explains the key concepts and then presents the argument, okay? That's what you have to think about. So, catches the reader's attention um, and maybe introduces the topic, okay? Background explains the main idea, or I should actually say defines the main idea and the importance of the question, okay? And the thesis, as we already discussed, presents the argument of the author, that's you, okay? That's the way that it works, okay? That's standard, all right? Um, so let's write a hook, okay? The hook is an interesting statement um, that catches your reader's attention and it includes the topic. Now that's really easy for us because we already talked about the topic. The topic is the design of newly constructed buildings. Okay, um, so here I'm going to write my hook and then All right, I'm gonna stick with that hook. Your hook should be pretty short, so it shouldn't be a really long, like two sentence. I usually say eight to 12 words, okay? Mine's maybe a little bit longer, but it's because we have a longer topic today. Um, so this is mine here. All right, we've got lots of hooks coming up in our Academic English Help channel. I would love to see some hooks come up in our General English Help channel as well. I'm not really seeing uh, too many there. Uh, Satria is asking, is the hook really needed? Yes, Satria, the hook is really needed, especially if you're going for a band seven, eight, or nine. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, I've talked to many IELTS examiners, former examiners that have marked thousands of task two essays, and they say that if they don't see a hook, they basically never give that essay a band nine. So uh, they are look, even though it's not necessary, they are looking for a hook, okay? All right, um, so lots of hooks. Uh, Kyber says, or Kyber writes, everybody has its preference of constructing a new building. Um, okay, Kyber, it's a little bit broad, a little bit general. So everyone has their own preference. Uh, Janiel, every year lots of buildings are erected in the downtown areas of cities. Yeah, let's uh, use a new word, Janiel, instead of constructed, erected, erected. Uh, uh the outlook of new construction is of significant importance in urban areas. Um, yeah, uh, and it's good. I might use that 
in my background because you're talking about the importance of the design. So think about your background um, at the same time when you're thinking about your hook on. So it might be a way to shorten your introductory paragraph, which is okay, but just keep that in mind that you're kind of overlapping there. Okay. Um, Josh says building design has a massive impact on the reputation of every city. Josh, that's very good. Okay. I like it. Building design has a massive impact on the reputation of every city. Again, that's also uh, impacting the importance of the question, but I do like that for a hook as well. Um, Bavia, very good. All right, nice. Amu, uh, Amu, keep it a bit shorter, okay? So shorten that up. All right, um, here is my uh, hook. There are thousands of potential designs for new buildings that pop up in cosmopolitan areas worldwide. So I think that's where, you know, this question's really sourced from is you have so many different looks for buildings uh, these days when you look at these new skyscrapers or buildings that are popping up, right? So I'm just, you know, I like to keep my hook fairly simple but impactful right now. Um, you're thinking cosmopolitan is like metropolitan. It's like downtown areas. Okay. All right. Um, Arda, you do what you can. Don't worry about it. If you can't see the lesson live, catch up on it afterwards. Okay. All right. Now the background, the look. Okay. So. Architects. All right, so there's my background. And now I'm just simply going to take my thesis and plop it in at the end. Okay, so for ease of sake here, control copy that. And then a thesis in the actual outs exam, you can just uh, cut and paste. And there's my introductory paragraph at a band nine level. Okay, so it really is just a recipe. All right. Um, so, uh, here is my introduction. There are thousands of potential designs for new buildings that pop up in cosmopolitan areas worldwide. Architects invest a great amount of effort and time in the functional and aesthetic design of skyscrapers and other structures to suit the needs of the city's citizens. Okay. The look of these buildings greatly impacts the reputation and function of these urban areas. In my opinion, both the government and the investors should impact the design. Instead of impact, because I think I already used that word somewhere earlier, um, I'm going to use influence. The design of new structures in metropolitan areas as the former is responsible for safety and cityscape, and the latter is guided by cost, profit, and pride. That kind of an introduction will get you a band nine. Now, certainly there's a fair bit of vocabulary that's needed to construct this, but what's most important, more important than the vocabulary, is to have the structure and the information. Okay, good structure, good information, 
makes a great essay. Then vocabulary becomes important as well. All right? Okay. So, Bavia, good luck on your test tomorrow. I'm sure you're going uh, to do just fine. All right? Uh, Karan Patel for the background says it is often argued whether the government or the investor should drive the construction and management of these newly erected buildings. Sure, Karen, that works as well for the background. Okay. All right, everyone. So I think um, you should have uh, some more clarity on this now. And uh, tomorrow we're going to continue with the body paragraphs and the conclusion so that you can see the whole essay. Uh, thank you so much for joining me on General English Help uh, YouTube channel as we're multi-streaming now. It's our other channel for the general. And thank you so much members and viewers on our Academic English Help channel. It's been my pleasure to show you how to interpret, understand, and plan your task to band nine a response. Aditya Kulkarni, just to answer that question real quickly, the background defines the main idea of the question and explains the importance of the question. Okay? Only ask your questions once, Aditya. I'll catch them, especially as a member. I see them more clearly. Okay? So you don't need to ask me multiple times. Uh, Aditya, I think you maybe missed that part of the lesson because I explained it. Okay. Um, that's it. So everyone, if you'd like to see lots of HD video lessons, like pre-recorded high quality, uh, sign up for our premium package at aehelp.com for academic IELTS and gieltshelp.com for general IELTS. We've got tons of help there for you. It's well worth it. We're world leaders when it comes to IELTS exam preparation. All right, uh, that's it for me for today. Have a lovely, lovely rest of your day. If it's late in your country, I wish you a good night, sweet dreams. Much love to all of you wherever you are in this beautiful world. Bye for now.